Well, good morning on this Friday, 27th of March, 2020. Uh, we gather together, Highbury Congregational Church family and those who are watching in. Uh, I know that um, in a couple of hours, uh, my mum and dad are going to be up having a cup of coffee uh, in the kitchen, not at uh, Tim Hortons as, as it used to be. Uh, but for now, it's uh, in the kitchen. And I want to say hello, mum and dad. So, uh, the other evening, uh, my second daughter decided to make some red velvet cupcakes. And they tasted absolutely delicious. When they were in the process of, of making them and she was divvying them up into the uh, cupcake holders, there was a bit of a debate about whether um, we should make five cupcakes or six cupcakes. There was enough of the mixture for six. And she said, well, I don't really want to make six because, well, you know, there's five of us in the family and we'll all be arguing over who gets the extra one. And I said, well, of course, it's going to be me, isn't it? No, it's going to be me. I made them. And there we go. So we did make six. I don't know who got the sixth cupcake, actually. They were delicious. We all want to think that uh, we're loving, that we're caring, that we're kind, that we're generous. But the truth be told, if we look at our hearts honestly, there's a bit of us that wants to make sure that we get the extra cupcake that we get that little bit more because, well, who knows when uh, perhaps we'll miss out. Um, perhaps there won't be enough. And so there's kind of that instinct, the survival instinct within us. And it can lead to that, that dark side of selfishness. I'm going to come back to that in a couple of minutes. But in my reading in Jeremiah today, Jeremiah, he's a, a prophet of doom and gloom. He's announcing some uncomfortable truths to the, to the people who had committed uh, such injustice and oppression in their society. Uh, nobody really wants to listen to what he's got to say because, of course, he's predicting uh, that uh, Babylon is going to overrun the country. There's going to be a complete disintegration of society. There will be widespread breakdown. And everybody really wants to silence Jeremiah uh, even kill him. And uh, some of the elders respond to this by saying, hey, do you not think that maybe we we should listen to what Jeremiah is saying? Um, in times past, when a previous king heard uncomfortable truths and responded, there was a cessation and, and things went back to normal and, and people were, uh, you know, there was the goodness broke out and and uh, the, there was a good relationship with the Lord. Um, but we, in not listening, are on the point of inflicting great disaster on ourselves. We all want to hear a bit of good news. So when Hananiah, uh, another prophet, comes along, he is wearing a yoke on his shoulders and he breaks it and says, Jeremiah's talking a load of rubbish. There's not going to be any disaster. I shall break the yoke of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. I shall break it off the necks of all nations within two years. But of course, Hananiah is offering false hope. We all need a little bit of good news. And there are some prophets, some People who are speaking words saying it's all going to be over by Easter. Everything we, we need to get back to work. Uh, it's the economy that matters, stupid. Well, we can believe that, but it is a false hope. Now, going back to the cupcakes and looking at our own hearts and knowing a little bit about ourselves, in John 13. Jesus has just washed the disciples' feet, and then he becomes deeply distressed 
In very truth, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. And the disciples, they say, who? Me? It can't be me. And then Jesus says, it is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Now, in Middle, Middle Eastern cultures and other cultures as well, uh, and certainly in the first century, if you sat at the table of someone, if you entered their house, if you shared bread with them, uh, you became part of the family. Hospitality was yours, and you would be protected by your host. Jesus offers bread to everyone, particularly to Judas. Who me? Well, it turns out that it was Judas. He's the one who receives the bread and he throws Jesus' hospitality back in his face because, of course, Jesus is a lost cause. There's no hope. And he goes out. And then those sobering words, it was night. Where is the night time in my own heart and soul? Where is my own greed and selfishness? What is it about me that wants the extra cupcake? Hmm. And if I can content myself that I'm not Judas, I'm not a betrayer, then I find myself with Peter. And he's so desperate to follow Jesus. And Peter says, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Oh, and I'm so full of promise. Jesus, I'll follow you all the way. I'll do whatever has to be done. Yes, I'll even die for you, Jesus. But will I? Have I the courage and the strength? Will you really lay down your life for me, Jesus asks? In very truth, I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. I think that for us, we need to ask hard questions of ourselves. There is great generosity to hear windows and doors opened and people clapping, uh, whistling, cheering, battering on pots and pans, the streets filled with noise in gratitude for our NHS staff, for our carers. It was a wonderful expression of solidarity and community. And there is so much goodness out there. And yet there are those who are greedy, who are trying to make profit out of this situation. The thing is, is not for me to look to someone else and to point the finger at someone else. Today's task, every day's task, is to say, where is the night time in my heart? Where is the darkness? To what extent am I prepared to exchange the truth for a lie if the lie gives me the good news that I want? Some years ago, when I graduated from Bible college, uh, my aunt uh, made this beautiful bookmark, the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi, and it's all backwards on the, on the screen. But I've kept this in my Bible and I've prayed it often, and uh, I thank her for that gift. So let's pray together, bringing our darkness to God, the shadow side. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant 
that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And so we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, now and always. Amen.